So for the past few weeks, I've been dedicating all of my spare time to this truck bed trailer project that we have going on here on the channel right now. I love projects like this because I get to be as creative as I want to be. I get to do things that I normally wouldn't do to the back of a, you know, pickup truck, you know, the back of the truck bed of my Toyota. There's a lot of stuff that I'm doing to this bed that I would not want to do to the back of my truck. And I kind of just get to do it. I get to be as creative as I want. And I've been trying to get all the quick grimy stuff out of the way. Like you'll see here, I'm just kind of building the wooden floor for the bed. After we removed that plastic bed liner from this truck bed, I found a lot of big rust holes in the floor and I don't want to get into trying to repair every single hole. So I am going to put a wooden floor in. You'll see here in a minute that we get it carpeted really nice and it's going to look really good when we're done. I went ahead and did spray the floor down first with bed liner. So it's got two good coats of bed liner all over the rust hole. I wire brushed everything really good and the the new wooden floor with a carpet will just lay on top of that and we'll bolt it down here you see me removing all of the old graphics they were just not really good shape to try to save not to mention you see here that I'm actually adding vinyl to this truck bed uh, the original plan was to wrap the entire side of this truck bed but I kind of changed my mind for two reasons. One, I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, there's some rust holes in the bottom that I didn't want to get into trying to repair. I did repair a lot of the rust holes in the top of the bed cap, uh, like where the old bed rails used to be screwed down into. I did weld up those holes and grind them back down smooth, but the sheet metal at the bottom of the bed where the rust holes are down in the corners it's just so thin I don't want to open that can of worms to try to fix every single hole and I didn't want to put wrap over those holes because it would have just caused problems in the future so I was able to come up with a plan to use wrap that I, I found this wrap on Amazon and all of this will be linked in the video description below but I come up with a plan to just wrap the center portion of this which it did two things. The first thing it did, it did, it was really easy to do because there was no curves or anything that I really had to work with. And I didn't have to try to put vinyl over those rust holes and risk it, you know, water getting behind the vinyl and then air or dirt and just having a problem later on. So, and, and not to mention, it was a lot easier to do without having to go around all these sharp edges and curves. It's more of a flat piece. And here you see me just unrolling the first piece. I did it on the side without the fuel tank door first so that if I messed up, you know, I wanted to, I want to get the practice side, the easiest side out of the way. So we're going to end up wrapping both sides of this truck bed and the tailgate. And the tailgate, I'm doing something really special with. I, I don't have it in the shop yet right now but you guys are really gonna like the tailgate when we get to it. But the vinyl wrap, I've gotta say, it did go on very easy. As you see there, I just, it's really forgiving. I was able to pull it up when I got a wrinkle and kind of snap it back down. I'm using this little squeegee that I have here at the house. It's got the little felt on the end of it. It's the same one that I've got whenever we wrapped my kayak a few weeks ago and it works really good and i did clean the bedside really well before i put this vinyl on i used some acetone and cleaned it up and here you see me actually using the heat gun because we are gonna i'm gonna try my best to get the wrap around those little edges just enough so that when i do spray the bed liner and that's what i'm gonna put on the side of this truck uh, it'll cover over the edge of the vinyl so you're not gonna see that edge and what you just seen me do right there was cut that line with the knife against the paint and I don't care about this truck bed under here because like I said we're fixing the bed line it but if you're putting this on your actual truck bed do not put the box cutter up against your paint and just drag it because when you do decide to take the vinyl off you're just gonna have a huge scratch in your vehicle but like I said I don't really care about this one and as you can see it turned out really good I was able to heat up those edges and you see how I tucked them down into the cracks so once we spray the bed liner and hopefully we'll be able to get that done in today's video but once we get it sprayed that line of bed liner is going to hide that line of the wrap and it should all blend really good and we'll finally get rid of all of this red I do not like a red truck I did put the wrap on over the fuel door 
And I did that because I wanted to make sure that the camo pattern did still match up. I didn't want to try to do it separate. So I pulled it on over it and then I cut around it and then I unbolted it. And here you see me just pulling off the vinyl. I tried to save as much as possible. I actually restuck this vinyl back onto the, the white paper that it come on. And now I'm back on the floor. I had to kind of flip flop back and forth because my carpet hadn't come in yet. I got this carpet on Amazon. It's the same stuff that I used to do my rear seat delete and uh, my truck bed camper build that we did a few months ago here on the channel where I built that bed system in the back of my short bed Toyota Tacoma. It's the same carpet. I got it on Amazon. All this stuff, including, including that glue that I just showed you there, it'll all be linked below. Uh, everything, I try to get as much stuff as I can off Amazon. That way, when you guys are doing a project, it's easier for you to just click the Amazon link and go pick it up. But uh, one thing I do suggest, you see me here, I'm spraying the, the uh, not the paint, the glue on the back of the carpet. And you also want to spray the wood too. So in a second, you'll see me spray the wood just like that. And you let it tack up for a good five minutes before you put them together. And doing that, it, it really makes sure that glue holds this carpet down really good. And it turns out really good. I mean, you can still manipulate it some once you throw it over and you start rubbing it down in the corners and stuff. You can peel it up for just a little while. You don't have long, but you, you just get your wrinkles out, kind of work in the center and pull your way to the edges. Like you see me doing here, I pulled it back up and I'm just rubbing it from the center all the way down. And I didn't try to do this whole floor at the same time because this floor is six foot by five foot. And I didn't want to risk one side getting stuck before the other or me getting a big wrinkle. So what you'll see me do is I only did half. And like you see here, I've, then I pulled the other side of the carpet back, spray it down really good. I do the same thing. I spray the floor and the, t the back of the carpet, let it sit for about five or 10 minutes. And then I pull it over and start rubbing it down. You can also, I didn't hear, but you can also use an old paint roller, you know, one that's got a clean roller on it and you can roll the carpet down really good with it. This stuff will stay on there forever. This is how I put carpet on boats when I build like John boats with wooden floors or even, you know, bass boats. I've used that same glue technique on this carpet for bass boats and it doesn't come off. It's, it's, it's really good. Even getting rained on, it doesn't come off. And now it's time for me to do the stapling. I did go around this entire floor. As you can see here, I got me one of these, I think it's a Bauer electric staple gun from Harbor Freight. I think this thing was like 30 or 40 bucks. It's worth this weight in gold when you're doing big projects like this, because it saves your hand. If you've got one of those squeeze staplers, which I used, I've done whole bass boats with a squeeze stapler and my hands just kill me after, you know, at the end of the project. But this thing's easy. You just push it down and start going around, clicking the button and it staples everything right down. Here, I'm just kind of forming the carpet around my curve. I, I was able to build this whole floor using one sheet, one four by eight sheet of three quarter inch plywood by cutting it down to the six foot. And then that left me with a two foot by a uh, two foot strip at the end, not two foot by two foot, two foot by four foot strip at the end. And I was able to use that strip to make the little wings on the side that you see that are gonna fill up the side of the, the fender wells when we drop it in. And I even have a little bit of wood left over. I didn't think one sheet would do it, but if you cut it right, you can get one sheet to do a full six foot bed like this. So now I'm just stapling it all the way around. I'm gonna cut everything up and then drop it in. I am gonna bolt this to the floor. So we're gonna drill four holes. Once we get everything complete and we get the floor where we need it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to drill four holes and just bolt this straight down. And I'm doing wood too, so that we can bolt other things, drawer systems and stuff like that, that I'm gonna show you here in a minute in today's video. We'll be able to bolt straight down to this floor and kind of have a base to build all this, you know, the power boxes and stuff like that. But this thing turned out great. I absolutely love this project. All right, y'all, thanks for clicking on the video and tuning into my channel this week. As you can tell, this video is a little bit different than usual. I wanted to start off by giving you guys a quick recap of all of the stuff that I've got done kind of off camera. I filmed, you know, some of it as you've seen there, but I got a lot of stuff done to this thing and I wanted to kind of get you caught up so you know where we're at. As you can see, I've already dropped the bed back on the trailer. 
got it bolted down. I dropped the floor in. It's not bolted in yet because we got to pull it back out to do some painting. I got to get rid of all this red. I'm going to tape up all of this gray camo that you just watched me stick on, this vinyl wrap. We're going to protect it and it's going to be black. I'm going to paint all of this same black bed liner. And I'm going to cover this red with it. We're going to get rid of every bit of it. I'm not going to go through all the tedious stuff of trying to weld up and fix every little rust hole that you're going to see around the bottom. It's, if, if I go and try to fix every bit of that on this truck bed, I might as well just got a new truck bed, you know, so I'm not going to do that. You're not going to really see it. I just didn't want to cover it with vinyl and have the issue, like I mentioned a while ago, of the vinyl peeling up or stuff getting behind it. Right here, it's stuck down solid. It's been on there for a couple of weeks, actually, and that's something else I want to share with you guys. The reason this week's video is going to be a little bit different, I do have a lot of stuff behind the camera I'm fixing to walk and show you that we're going to be adding to this build to kind of give you a, a sneak peek of what's to come over the next couple of weeks. I've got some big, big installs coming up that we're going to add to this. I partnered up with some new companies and it's going to be really cool. But I haven't been able to film anything for probably about two weeks now. All of that footage that you just seen at the beginning of this video, I actually filmed ahead of time. I filmed about three weeks ago. And for the past year, I've been about two weeks ahead on my videos for you guys on YouTube here. And I've been able to do that by pre-filming, editing, and having videos to go and not getting myself in a bind. But we had an issue about two weeks ago where uh, my wife's mother... Uh, passed away and it was very unexpected. She's from up north. We had to travel up north about two weeks ago and we've been away for a while. So if you guys believe in prayer, I really appreciate it if you pray for my wife and my family. I really appreciate it. If you believe in it, I do believe in it, but if you don't, that's fine. Uh, but we've been kind of dealing with that. We had to put our life on hold for a while. And so I've been, I'm now I'm back to where I've been caught up. And I didn't want to skip a Monday install for you guys. It is Saturday. I've got two days to get this video edited and on the YouTube for you guys to have something to watch. I really didn't want to skip a week. And it, we're going to get back on track. We're back home now. We're just going to deal with it. But I really appreciate all the prayers and stuff. A lot of you guys who have kind of seen what's been going on on the, you know, Facebook and stuff like that. You've reached out and I appreciate it. But today I'm going to kind of walk you around. I'm going to grab the camera, show you how well the floor looks. The carpet looks great. I absolutely love it. And the, it's going to match really well with a lot of stuff that we're adding into this. As you can see, I got a couple of wings up right here. I've kind of bolted them up really quick to give you an idea in just a minute of how we're going to mount this tent system, how we're going to do the fridge system. I've got a drawer system going in. It's going to be really cool. So I'm going to walk you around some stuff really quick, show you the new products that we're going to be working with. Now, mind you, I'm going to show you these products, but this is not the install video for these products. I, I just want to go ahead and put them out there. So you got to, you kind of get an idea of where we're going with this. So next time you see, we'll have this, truck it won't be red anymore i'm gonna try i'm film it you know but i can't paint in here i've got to paint outside that stuff is really strong and i'm gonna actually pull this thing out while we got some sunlight after i get it taped off and spray this bed liner all over that let it dry that way i can actually start installing stuff i can't install any of this stuff until we get all the paint and take it care of but anyway let me show you guys the plan all of the gear i've got keep pointing over here but i've got all of this lined up right off camera you can't see it but we've got some wheels, we've got some really cool stuff. Let me show you and quit talking. So first off, I'll show you guys the truck. The wrap turned out amazing. I absolutely love it. There's better light over here. Let me show you this side. And as you can see, I went ahead and I got the inside already sprayed with bed liner. I got the whole front, this whole platform area sprayed. And I've got a game plan for this area here. I'm gonna go over with you in just a minute, but here's the wrap on the side with the fuel door. I've had a lot of good ideas in the comments from you guys about what to do with this fuel door, and I've narrowed it down to two. I'm either gonna have it so that we can open this up to plug into shore power, like when we're at a camp, campground or something that's got power hookup, or I'm gonna install our water tank in here like it's a fuel tank and have a, a fill hole right here so we can fill up the water tank. I ain't made up my mind yet. It's either gonna be power or water. We're gonna figure that out as we get to it, but look how good this wrap. And this is just some Amazon wrap. It is 3M, so it's good quality. And it, it was able, you know, I was able to kind of manipulate it and get it how I want it. And the plan is, is I've got this uh, bed liner cut tape and I'll show it to you. It's over with the rest of the stuff, but I'm gonna tape this whole area. 
all the way around, right kind of barely over top of the vinyl. And that's gonna, then I'm gonna protect all of this. And when we get the spray on all of this truck bed, and here's all the damage I was telling you about. See these holes? I just, I'm not gonna go through and fix all that. But once I spray a couple of good thick coats of this bed liner, we'll be able to pull that cut tape and it'll pull us a good, nice, clean, straight line and it'll hide all of it. Look how good that carpet looks in there. This turned out really, really good. Show it to you from the back. The lighting's not great in here, but I didn't want to open the garage door. Let's open up, Let's swing this bad boy open. Look at there. And I don't have the tailgate in because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, I'm doing something special with the tailgate. I think you guys are really gonna like. Oh, I about smacked my kite with the swing out gate. Let me put this back up. All right, so there's where the bed is right now. And as you can see, I've got these things bolted on here. And that is because we are going with the billy bar system on this truck bed. And I'm gonna show you the system we're going with. It's gonna be very unique. And because I didn't realize it, but billy bars, you know, I've been partnered with them for a very long time. I was one of their first people to install their tailgate cover, uh, their tonneau cover, bed cover, I mean, uh, bed racks like this is. Their bed racks are designed so you can install them on your truck bed and still run a tonneau cover, like a roll up or a fold up tonneau cover, and you can still lift it up and get access to your bed. I do think we are gonna go the tonneau cover route because after thinking about it for a while, I would rather have some sort of cover over this and to protect it from water and you know dirt and stuff when we're off road, which means that I'm gonna move up to the front and weld me up a platform here to put our refrigerator, our diesel heater and stuff like that. So we're gonna do a little bit more fabricating after this body is painted, but I am gonna go the tonneau cover route because I mean, there's no sense in running a really awesome setup like Billy Bars, which is designed specifically so you can run a tonneau cover. And if we didn't run a tonneau cover, it would be, you know, kind of sacrilegious. I think we have to run a tonneau cover if we're going with that Billy Bar setup. But all right, so anyway, there's that. Now let's get on to the goodies. Now, like I said, we're not gonna install this today, but I am gonna show you what we've got coming. So first of all, you can already see what this is. This is three brand new rims that I got from wreckstuff.com. Let me show you over here. If you follow me for a long time, you know, you see these rims right here? Every trailer build that I've done on this channel, that, those wheels, my double jet ski trailer wheels, my adventure trailer we built last year, all come from wreckstuff.com, just like these. I'm gonna show you what these look like. I wasn't gonna do it. I was gonna make you guys wait until we did the install, but I changed my mind because I kind of like peeling this stuff off the rims, but wreckstuff.com carries the best wheels for your trailer. If you're doing any kind of trailer build, a boat trailer, a camper trailer like we're doing here, you can order nice wheels. Look at that. These are gonna look sick on there. These come with a center cap. In that bag there is all the lug nuts. Can you see how nice that looks? Man, there's gonna look sick. So I've got three of them. I've got one for each side and we're gonna be running the spare. And I think once this is painted black with that camo down the side, those rims are gonna look amazing on the side of that. So wreckstuff.com. Now this is not the video for installing these, but if you wanna get you some, if I've got the promo code for them already, I'll have it linked in the video description. But if you got a boat trailer, you wanna spruce up and add you some nice wheels, Get on there and look and see what they got. They've got some really nice stuff. I get all of my trailer wheels from wreckstuff.com. And if you're building one from scratch, they have trailerfenders.com too. You can go in there and get your trailer fenders. Same kind of, same company basically. All right, on to this side. Here, I've got some really nice tail lights. I actually found these on eBay and I think they're gonna look amazing once this whole trailer is black. Look at this. And I'm gonna wire it up just like it's a, you know, a regular truck bed, but check out those tail lights. Is that not gonna be cool or what? I'm gonna wire up the reverse lights and the tail lights, the blinkers, just like it's a truck. I went ahead and ordered me a seven pin hookup because I put these seven pins on all of the trailer builds that I do. That's a seven pin, so I'll be able to add reverse and power from my Tacoma to run through here. If I wanna use power from my Tacoma, we'll be able to run it all to that. 
Here is that cut tape that I mentioned. This is for if you're putting in a bed liner. Come on, focus. I found this on Amazon. If you're putting in a bed liner, uh, you need a way to cut a straight line. This is what you use. I got 120 feet of it. It should be enough, I hope. Excuse me. And here are two, my gimbal will go the right way. Here are two brand new products by Iceco. Now, when we get to the install video, I'll be able to go over more details about these. Like I said, this is just a sneak peek, but these are two new drawer slides that they just come out with that we're gonna be utilizing in this build. So as you can see, there's carpet, and the carpet almost matches perfectly to the carpet that I just installed. So that worked out great. But what's cool about this is that's not just a drawer. So this is a fridge slide and a drawer. You got a handle here, you pull this handle, and if your fridge, like my APL 55 there, was bolted onto the top of this or strapped down, you slide your fridge out, and then you got a lockable drawer that is completely separate. You can pull your drawer out. I can't go too far, it'll, it'll fall off my kayak stand here. The same way with this one. This is just two different sizes. This is a big old deep lockable drawer, and this is more shallow, but it's got the fridge slide here, slides out, and then you got a smaller drawer here. How cool is that? And it is solid as a rock. That thing is, that thing's pretty heavy actually. Uh, they are, they're solid as a rock, and I think we're gonna incorporate those. I may end up incorporating one of these in the back seat of my truck since we did that rear seat delete, and the other one is gonna hold my APL 55, which is this guy right here. If you haven't seen the review video on this new fridge that Iceco's got out, I'm gonna link it right here. Definitely go check out that video because this is the nicest camp fridge that I've ever owned. They, they thought about everything. They made it really heavy duty. They got straps. Go check out my review video. You'll really like it. But we are definitely, in, look at that slow close. We are definitely incorporating this into the build. And my thinking right now is I want to maybe use the smaller low profile drawer slide under this. And I've got their original drawer slide here, or not drawer slide, fridge slide there that I can use if I want to just use these for a stove or something like that, because you can kind of strap whatever you want to the top of these drawers. But my plan is to use my APL 55 Iceco fridge with the shorter drawer right here and have it level with the top so that my fridge would slide out. I'd have a drawer that slid out of that and we would be completely under the awning once we're all set up. I think that'd be really, really cool. Y'all let me know what you think. If uh, you got a better idea, let me know in the comments. But I think having the fridge slide out on the front, having the grill over here, the awning's gonna be up top, and I think it's actually gonna be on the other side, actually. But it'll all set up right here and be really nice up under the awning. Let me know what you think. I'll go ahead and link these in the video comments. I mean, not the video comments, in the video description below. If uh, you wanna check these out, these are brand new now. These just come out, and I should have a coupon code for these guys. If I don't have it yet, it'll be in the next video when we install it. So if you're interested in them, check the link, check the video description, see what I got down there, and definitely check out their APL 55. I love it. That is one rugged, they, they had overlanding in mind whenever they built this thing, and I really like it. Now over here, I have a ton of goodies set up, and I hate that it's dark over here. Hopefully it's not that dark on screen for you guys. But this is the Billy Bar rack system that we're gonna be installing and I've got their six foot molly panel system. This molly panel is gonna run down the side of the truck. So the molly panel is gonna go down each side so we can mount stuff to the sides. And I'm gonna have three rails going across. Now, I'm running three different bars because I've got a plan where we're gonna install some struts to be able to lift this tent up and down. And let me drop this bar in really quick. If I can do all this with one hand kind of give you guys an idea of how high this is going to be. Ugh. Drop that there. Drop that there. I love how these billy bars, they just go together so easily. And I don't even have it all the way bolted on yet, but this is how high it's going to set off the top of the truck bed. Let's see if I can get you guys a good angle there. And these are their eight inch risers. They sell two different sizes. I think they've got a five inch where it'll be only five inches high, and then they've got the eight. I wanted the eight because my original plan was to be able to pull my fridge in and out, and I wasn't gonna run a tonic over. 
Now I've decided that I am going to run a tonneau cover, but I still want that height because, and I won't be able to do this with one hand, but you'll see it when we do the install, because I do want to still utilize their full six foot molly panel system. And the plan is I'm going to have one of the billy bar rails here. I'm going to have one in the center, and then we're going to have another one here. I'm gonna mount our tent on the top of these three, but in the center one, I'm gonna mount a strut that attaches to the bottom of the tent, and it's gonna be a quick release of the tent on this bar, so that when we want to tilt the tent up, just like I have on my Tacoma, I'll be able to undo a couple of screws or latches, and we'll be able to actually tilt the tent up in the air to get more access up under the bed. You know, when the tent's not popped out, obviously, but another cool thing is, and I almost didn't go this route because I like to run an awning. And as you can see, if I mount an awning to this, it's just going to be too low. You don't want your awning, you know, waist high. You got to have your awning at least above your head. And that was the first thing I thought about whenever I thought about billy bars was, man, I want to run an awning, but I want the awning to be able to go up. I didn't realize that billy bars also carries these awning mounts. And these things are kind of telescopic. And I'll try to show you really quick. So you've got this, that this right here mounts on the rail. And I said I wasn't going to show you guys all this until then. But this mounts on the rail. And then you've got these two brackets right here. You've got a piece of, a short piece of their rail that sticks up. And then you've got these really cool CNC'd Billy Barbs brackets. This is the actual awning bracket. And if you can kind of see how this would work, if I don't do this without breaking everything, this is gonna mount up off the side of our rails over here. <laughs> I'm showing you guys anyway after I said you'd get to see it when we did the install. But this is kind of how it does. And this is adjustable, so we're gonna still be able to mount our awning up high off the side. It'll look good. It won't look out of place. It'll be just above the tent, but it'll be just high enough so we'll be able to run our 270 awning off the side of this build and have a low profile tent without, you know, riding around with a tent sky high. Not to mention that opens up the door for us to be able, let me set all this down. It opens up the door for us to be able to carry a kayak on top of our tent rack because the tent that we're going with is that cray fuel tent and it's got a built in rack system on top of it. So if I want to throw a kayak, obviously not this one because that one weighs a ton, but my lighter kayak, I'll be able to throw up on top and take the kayak on top of this trailer with us. So I think that is gonna be really cool. And all this other stuff you see piled up here is stuff that I plan on incorporating into the build. I've been trying to make a list of everything that I think that I want part of this build. This is our diesel heater. I definitely want it incorporated into this build because these winter camping nights or even during the early spring when it's really cold at night or in the morning, that thing is a lifesaver. That is an awesome, awesome heater for a tent. I've got a full video on it. I'll link it right here. Definitely go check out that tent heater. If you're, you're getting into tent camping or car camping, that diesel heater is a lifesaver. I've actually been using that to heat my shop up while I'm out here working and it does great. But I've kind of just stacking all of the gear that I think. This is a gazebo that we take. This is some of our folding chairs. Uh, this is actually brand new. I haven't got to use this yet. I'll go ahead and show y'all this. This, if I can do it right, this is the new Benny Hike air compressor. I couldn't <laughs> do all this with one hand. It's got some weight to it, but this is what you get from Benny Hike now. They've, you know, I've done their awning, I've done their rooftop tent. Matter of fact, I've got another rooftop tent coming from this company that they just released that y'all are absolutely gonna love. But they're getting more and more into the Overland game and they're making more and more gear other than just their bagless awnings like. That, ba that bagless awning is really cool, but they're making more and more stuff other than just the awnings and the tent. This is their Pro. They've got two different versions of their 12 volt air compressors. This is the Pro. This thing will go up to 125 PSI. It is insane. I think this is called the Air Winter Pro portable air compressor. And I'm actually gonna incorporate this so, so that it's bolted 
into the bed of this truck somewhere. So this is one of the things that I wanted to set out. I'm trying to set all the gear out in the floor that I want to make a permanent home for in this project. But this is one of them. They sent me a coupon code and a link for this. So this will be listed in the video description below. They've got two different kinds. They've got the Pro and then they've got the smaller one. This Pro is a beast. I used it as soon as I got it here. I plugged it up to a battery over there, turned it on and tried it out. And it runs just as good as my shop air compressor. So this is gonna be awesome just to have for emergencies or if we're at the lake and you wanna blow up rafts or floats for the kids. You got an air compressor built right into the camper. That is gonna be really cool. Check Benny Hike out. I'm gonna have it linked below. I have coupon codes below. These guys are awesome. This is a great product. I hate that I wasn't able to get a whole lot of work done in this week's video, but like I mentioned before, we had some life situations over the past few weeks that we really had to take care of. And I really do appreciate all of you guys praying for our family, praying for my wife. She really needs it right now. And I wanted to also make sure that I didn't skip a week with you guys. So even though we didn't get a whole lot accomplished in this week's video, I was able to give you a sneak peek on kind of what's to come. And next time we get to work on this thing, we're gonna make some progress. Once this paint is done and we have the welding and stuff finalized, we get to start adding all this really cool stuff that I showed you today into this build. And hopefully by this spring, we're gonna be able to take this bad boy out and do some camping. Don't forget, I mentioned it, I think in the original beginning, the part one video of this build, I do, I do plan on having a trip planned using this for the first time, hopefully, with you guys. I'm gonna put together either a members only trip or a subscribers trip. For those of you who wanna come out to maybe Gunnersville or somewhere in North Alabama to go fishing and camping, this spring this should be ready and we're gonna take it. You guys will get to see it in person and, and do some cool stuff with it. Also, last week I told you guys in that video to put a name for this build down. I've got two names that I'm kind of going with right now that you guys are, but it's still open. I'm not gonna close it yet. I'm gonna give you guys one more week. Go back to that video, not this video, but go back to the last week's video where I asked you guys to leave a name in the comments up under it. I wanna name this trailer. It's gotta be named something really cool. Come up with whatever you wanna come up with. Just leave some names. I'm gonna pick the name uh, and pin it at the top of the comments in last week's video. Not this video, last week's video. Once it's pinned, I'm gonna mail whoever the winner is, whoever name I go with, we're gonna add to it. I'm gonna have decals made for the name. There's one really good one on there that I'm, I mean, there's two really good ones, but there's one I'm really leaning towards right now that's really cool. But I'm gonna have the name uh, of a sticker and put on the back of the trailer once we're done. So. Whenever we do the subscriber trip or the members trip that we do in spring, you'll get to see that and you'll get to see the, the actual name on the side that one of you got to pick for this build. So go to that video, leave some names, leave some cool, uh, they can be funny names, I don't care. Leave them down there. I'm gonna go with the coolest one, the one I like the best, pin it, and I'm gonna send the winner a mystery tackle box out. So go check that out on that video. This week, guys, I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. I'm gonna get in the house and get this video edited so that you actually get to watch it on time Monday at six o'clock. For those of you who are new to my channel, if this is the first one you've seen, if you're clicking just because of this build, go check out my homepage. I've done several builds kind of like this. I've built different trailers and kayaks and boats and stuff. Go check out some of those builds. If you like what you see, consider subscribing while you're there. If you wanna become a member and support the channel, it's five bucks a month, $4.99 a month. You get to be a member of the channel, you get early access to these videos, you get to see them at least a day early usually, and you get to see, you know, kind of some behind the scenes stuff. So go, go join the membership if you wanna support the channel, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I will catch you guys next Monday at six o'clock. Peace.